Shadow Hearts' game that never managed to reach the same heights of big hitters like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, but the several games in the series that did release on the PlayStation 2 would go on to garner a dedicated fanbase. From the New World is the third game in the franchise and takes place in an alternate version of early 1900s America. The game begins rather modestly by introducing players to Johnny Garland, a young man residing in New York City whilst trying to make a living running a detective agency. Now unlike the vast majority of other RPGs on the market, Shadow Hearts does not use a system of input and commands that have random odds of success. Instead, it makes the player the deciding factor in what succeeds and fails. This is achieved by something known as the Judgment Ring, which soon becomes the game's most important aspect. And although it is simple, it is also engrossing and addictive. The ring appears as a lopsided circle with coloured sections and a spinning needle. To succeed in the attempted action, the player must hit the X button as the needle passes through the coloured sections. With most actions also having a small, critical hit area on the ring, which makes the attacks even stronger. This simple concept adds a whole new layer to combat. Now visually, From the New World isn't as impressive and it's certainly not the best looking game you'll find on the PlayStation 2. The character models are generally very good and detailed, but most of the environments are quite lackluster and muddled textures are a frequent issue unfortunately. On the other hand, enemy designs are generally excellent and look as good as the main character models themselves. Most of the bosses are impressive as well, as they're all very large and look like they're easily capable of crushing your entire party into the ground. Shadow Hearts may not have name recognition on its site, but it certainly isn't lacking quality. That anyone's sick of the usual grind of secret princesses, effeminate villains and giant swords owes it to themselves to check out. Grandia Extreme can be described as the one game in the series that undoubtedly divided its fans. It's much more closely related to a dungeon crawler than a regular RPG, with that being one of the main reasons many people pass it up. The gameplay on the other hand more than makes up for any shortcomings in the story. You really only have one main base of operations as you play the game, which you will come to rely on as you buy and sell items, learn skills at the skill shop or learn magic at the magic shop. From this hub area, you can embark on a series of missions set across the world map, with a party of up to 4 members. Once out on a mission, there's a nice amount of variety to each location as well as objective that makes each skirmish all the more enjoyable. But the best part of the gameplay has to be the battles, which are extremely similar to those of Grandia 2's. Party members can attack with a combo move, a skill or a magic ability, as well as utilising a ton of items and defensive options as well. However, all of the action plays out in real time. So to keep track of the commands you give your party members, you'll have to pay close attention to the action wheel at the bottom right of the screen. Enemies will follow this wheel as well, and you can check in on them to see what skills they are planning to use. Speaking of skills, Grandia Extreme introduces the ability to team up with other party members and perform them. Known as feats, they unleash devastating attacks, and over the course of leveling up, you'll soon start to unlock more of these attacks, which really helps shake up the combat even further. This all comes together to create an immense amount of strategy that's required for even the most mundane of encounters. On the whole, the story is weak, the music is rather dull, but there is a great battle system just waiting to be dug into. It won't be for everyone, but it's bound to click with a few who will be able to enjoy what the game gets so right. The Shining Force series has traditionally fallen into the tactical RPG genre and was definitely a forerunner with the Final Fantasy tactics and disguise of the gaming world. When a new Shining Force game was announced for the PlayStation 2, many gamers were hoping for another tactical RPG with that shining charm. Even though the game's story is about as memorable as your first birthday party, the gameplay really hits home and provides a range of engaging aspects that take it to the next level. One being the incredible range of weapons and equipment on offer that makes tearing through enemies that bit more enjoyable. From axes to swords, bows and staves, the game constantly rewards you with new options, as well as a plethora of armor and items that mix up battles even further. You can attack with melee weapons or use magic by pressing the attack button that generally locks on to the nearest enemy, but you can guide your attacks as well by using the analog stick. Just be warned though, you're going to be slamming that button a lot, and I mean a lot. On the other hand, magic works a bit differently 
differently than other RPGs, and instead of being able to cast it naturally, it's instead handled through your weapons. There's several elemental types as well that naturally form the basis of some serious strategy and open ways to quickly dispatch your targets. Occasionally you'll fight a boss who's a much larger souped up version of the minions you fight, and it's here where the several systems that make up the combat come into their own. Shining Force Neo isn't your traditional Shining Force, but it's still a lot of fun to play. The fun comes from beating down waves after waves of enemies. Fighting, collecting and upgrading comprise the backbone of the game, and although it's a simple formula, it can get very addicting. If you're a hardcore Shining Force fan or just fond of dungeon crawlers in general, then Neo is well worth playing. Grolanza Heritage of War is the fifth game in the series, and just like its predecessors, it offers up a strategic role-playing game where the battles take place in real time. The game starts off quite different to many other RPGs, and instead requires the player to play through several prologues before getting to the meat of the adventure. They introduce you to the world, which seems to be a gigantic island that's made up of several factions. With the world dying and the populace unable to grow food, it sets the stage for each of these groups to fight for survival. As you would expect, the general gameplay sees you exploring the island and the various nations that comprise it, whilst interacting with a lovable cast of NPCs and party members, which manage to breathe some real life into the events that transpire. When it comes to encounters, you're more than capable to take on anything that comes your way, with weapon-based moves to the far more impressive magical abilities and skills that make each engagement a really strategic affair. Being a huge strategy fan, I found the gameplay in Grolanza Heritage of War to not only be challenging at times, but most of all, extremely fun. Now a big part of Grolanza is how you interact with your party and the world in general, as you are often given several options to choose from in the game's dialogue. While playing through again, you can not only select different options, but there's also a few options that can only be picked on a second playthrough. You can also earn different endings in the game, depending on which one of your party members you have the highest friendship rating with, which all adds up to a serious amount of replay value. On the whole, Heritage of War is a solid RPG. That is well worth seeking out and playing for yourself. Ephemeral Fantasia has to be one of the most misunderstood and underrated RPGs on the PlayStation 2. When it first released, it was largely ignored due to its clear low budget, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad game at all. If you look past the somewhat basic presentation, there's a great RPG just waiting to be experienced. Now to the gameplay, which is split up into three main parts. First you've got Exploration, which will see you visiting a variety of locales, from bustling villages to lush green forests and dank dungeons. And it's mainly here where you'll come across a ton of items including map pieces which are essential to finding your way around the world. Second is combat which is fairly easy to get used to. You have no attack command, instead you have a set of skills to use. These skills require AP to perform with the acquisition of new skills being made by repeatedly using the same ones that you already have. You can also gain skills from your allies, but they require HP instead of AP. A nice little feature added to the battle system is the ability to position your camera angle in any way you like. There's four different presets that focus on different aspects of the camera, with the most enjoyable being dynamic. This one provides a nice touch of camera work to each and every move you perform. You can also change the posture for battle from a more offensive to defensive approach, which adds a little more depth to each encounter. Finally, the last brings us back to Mouse's music and talking guitar, which plays out in a sort of rhythm game fashion. By hitting the prompts with the right timing, it's possible to gain combos and play the music much more elegantly. I'm not gonna lie though, this is perhaps one of the most challenging parts of the game, and requires a ton of patience each and every time it pops up throughout the adventure. Overall, Ephemeral Fantasia won't be for everyone, but if you're like myself and are a huge fan of RPGs, it's well worth giving a go. Dual Hearts is an RPG that combines platforming, exploration and adventure elements into a seamless journey that is bound to stick with you long after the credits have rolled. It sees you taking up the fight as a young boy known as Rumble. You are able to enter into various NPCs' dreams in the hopes of finding the stone he desperately seeks. The game has a day and night cycle, and of course you can only enter the person's dream when they're asleep. Since some of them sleep during the day, it's up to you to find out their schedule 
and be at the right place at the right time. With each of the dreams you enter naturally serving as a level full of minigames, items to collect and enemies to defeat. And if you've ever played the likes of Zelda, you'll instantly feel right at home. You've got two buttons for attacking, where you assign two different weapons as well as a handy lock-on feature that negates some of the issues with the game's camera. The twist here is that you're not alone and are accompanied by a strange creature known as Tumble. Now Tumble does more than just follow you around, he's almost as useful as the main character himself. You can ride him and do things like ram enemies, fly and dive whilst using him, or stay off him completely and use your own weapons instead. This unique tag team combo adds a lot to the game and it easily becomes one of the standout aspects of the gameplay. Visually, Jewel Hearts is bright, colourful and very imaginative. Each level's design is completely unique from the last and offers a clear insight into each of the characters' dreams you enter. The game runs buttery smooth at 60 frames per second, making it an absolute joy to watch. It's not going to blow your mind or do anything remotely new that you haven't seen before, but it does achieve what it sets out to do, which is to create an enjoyable and charming adventure that can be enjoyed by all ages. The PlayStation 2 is no stranger to quality SRPGs, but one that often gets overlooked is Stella Deus. The journey takes place across the lands of Solon, a world which is slowly dying due to a mysterious fog that has shrouded the kingdom. The premise and the storytelling do a good job of keeping matters interesting as you go along, even if saving the world might be a bit cliche. Jumping into battle sees a familiar sight for fans of the genre, with all of the action taking place from an isometric point of view, with a grid-based map employed. Every move on the grid is governed by the amount of action points you possess, or AP for short, from moving to attacking and using special abilities or spells. Because of this, there's a serious amount of strategy involved in taking on even the most easiest of fights, and so long as your party is of the appropriate level, nailing foes is generally easy enough with the wide array of skills you'll have at your disposal. Like most RPGs, you'll find yourself growing your characters over the course of the adventure by using the experience and skill points you acquire in battle. They can be spent on a variety of abilities that can help out in a real tight spot, but the most valuable skills have to be the easy powers that can affect a wide amount of your party or enemies at one time, and these abilities really come in handy during some of the more challenging boss fights that are scattered throughout the game. Stella Deus doesn't set out to redefine its genre, but instead simply provides a good game of its type. Its battle system is slightly different but still easy to pick up and learn. The time you have to spend advancing in levels is something you have to be prepared for, but it's handled well for what it is and is fairly balanced in the game as a whole. Rogue Galaxy is without a doubt one of the most underrated RPGs on the PlayStation 2, and it's a real shame as it's one of the most enjoyable. Right off the bat, it is easy to see this game has got style, with its gorgeous cell-shaded aesthetic, and just as the name implies, it's a fascinating journey that takes place amongst the stars in a fictional galaxy, and from here you'll travel to several planets meeting some rather well-thought-out characters and enemies along the way. Overall, the fighting system is pretty polished, as you can control any part party member at any time, and since each individual party member has their own unique weapons and sub-weapons, you have quite a few choices in how to play. You can even switch between any weapon and sub-weapon you have in the middle of battle as well, which provides the best way to take advantage of your enemy's weaknesses on the fly. So as you can see, the battles grant you a lot of freedom to take them on exactly how you want to, but a big part of each battle are the various abilities and special skills that your characters can learn along the way, and they are all discovered from through a rather unique method of having to fill out each of your character's revelation chart. This chart is filled out by using items found throughout the game whether through stores or from enemies, and as you fill out these abilities, you will open up pathways to far more devastating moves that have the ability to flip the battle in the blink of an eye. Some of them even let multiple characters do stronger attacks together, but only if they're in the party at the same time. But what ends up being the most striking feature of Rogue Galaxy are the visuals I mentioned earlier. The game's environments are beautiful and diverse, and every planet you visit has a distinct look and feel. Cutscenes really show off the graphic prowess of the PlayStation 2, and you can tell that the developers have pushed the system to the utmost of its potential. The game is simply beautiful, cohesive and addictive, and is bound to leave you satisfied, making Rogue Galaxy one of the biggest and best games on the PlayStation 2. 
After the somewhat muted success of the original game on the PlayStation 1, Genki moved forward with a sequel for the then new PlayStation 2 that looked to capture the magic of the original, but at the same time introduced new features that evolved the concept as a whole. Now as far as gameplay is concerned, Jade Cocoon 2 delivers in spades. Anybody who's played a monster breeder game before, be it Pokemon or Monster Rancher, probably has a good idea of what they're getting into. The whole concept behind the gameplay changes little from other monster breeder games and sees you wandering around vast areas, collecting bigger and better monsters to do your bidding. Remarkably though, J Cocoon 2 makes a few tiny changes to make the system even better. First and foremost, the variety of different monsters you can collect is staggering. The game is populated by hundreds of different monsters, and any one of them you see in the game can be added to your combat ring and used in battle. The game's combat system is easily the most unique and engaging aspect of the gameplay. You're given a four-sided wheel known as a beast amulet upon which you place up to eight monsters that you've acquired. You order them to act by spinning the wheel so the desired side faces forward towards the enemy, and with the almost overwhelming number of attacks and abilities available, no two teams will be quite the same. J Cocoon 2 is an extremely enjoyable game with a few minor flaws, but the incredible, deep and yet laid back gameplay provides an enjoyable experience that will keep you coming back time and time again. Coming from the same company that brought us Star Ocean and Valkyrie Profile, Radiata Stories is one of the finest but most underappreciated RPGs on the PS2. It sees you taken on the part of Jack Russell. Let's talk about what makes this game unique, and that is the world. Radiata feels incredibly alive, and this is accomplished through two main mechanisms. First is the day and night cycle. There is a persistent clock running as long as the game is on, and the world reacts to this clock, whether you are present or not. Every single NPC has a schedule and motivations that they follow, and not only that, but every single one is unique. Because of this, you really develop an attachment to the characters of the world. Learning about the NPCs will come in handy as well, because of the second major gameplay feature that sets this game apart, and that is the fact that any character you meet can potentially become a part of your party. Of course, any RPG wouldn't be complete without a solid battle system, and thankfully Radiata Stories more than delivers. It's incredibly straightforward, as you use your weapon of choice you learn new skills and you can assign them into a combo depending on how many combo points the weapon has. The best thing about it is that there's a ton of weapons to get your hands on, from swords to axes and spears, which all offer up their own distinct advantages when deployed. Complementing this are a string of magical abilities that help even the playing field both offensively and defensively. Naturally, you'll find yourself leveling up over the course of the adventure, and as you do, more and more of these abilities become available. If you never had the pleasure of playing Playing this one when it first released, there's no better time than now to try it out for yourself. Well that does it for today's video, keep an eye out for part 2 as that will be coming up soon so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified about new videos which release every Monday and Thursday. You can follow me on all of the socials which are linked below to stay up to date and also join my growing community on Discord to meet many like minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve, Richard, Amy, Daniel, Paul, Dio, Alex, Pierre, Carl, Strider and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining my Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find all of these links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll catch you next time.